Welcome everybody to Law and Crime Daily. I'm Jesse Weber. A little more than a year after a former Microsoft design executive was gunned down in a targeted attack, police say they have made a second arrest, the new husband of the victim's ex-wife. The fatal shooting happened in Jacksonville Beach, Florida in February of 2022. Jared Bridegan had just dropped off his twins at their mother's home and was headed back to his own place with his two-year-old inside the car when he came across a tire in the road. When he went out to move it, someone shot him. And police say that that someone was 62-year-old Henry Tenen. When police arrested him this past January, he agreed to plead guilty and testify against any other accomplices. Now this week, authorities announced the involvement of Mario Fernandez Saldana. He is married to Bridegan's ex-wife. According to an affidavit, Tenen lived in a home that was owned by Fernandez Saldana, and investigators found three checks that Fernandez Saldana wrote to Tenen last fall. Also, phone records also show them show the men had contact with each other more than 60 times while police didn't say bride well they did say that bride again and his wife had, wife had a bitter divorce and a tense relationship afterward an exact motive has not been released so let's break this down i'm here with terry austin i'm here with brian buckmeyer terry authorities didn't say if there are any additional suspects but they're continuing their investigation what else could they be investigating right now well if I'm investigating this case, I am definitely looking at the victim's ex-wife because she could be behind the entire scheme. Now, one of the things they have to do, obviously, is look at any sort of digital records. That's how they connected Tenen and Saldano. And I think if they look closely enough, they could look for a connection with her. If she still is angry about the so, so, Brian, let me let me jump in here because I think, Tara, we're having a little bit of an audio issue. So, Brian, the arrest warrant for Fernando Saldana, heavily redacted, but what would be in it that would be the most damning for the defense? So, Jesse, there are three things that I need to focus on here from the defense. These three checks, the almost 60 messages, those both prior to the murder as well as after that, and the fact that the death penalty is on the table. Now, the relationship was one of landlord and tenant. If I can try to get the facts that those text messages and those checks may have been related to that relationship, we might be in the clear. But if they're what the prosecution is suspecting that these text messages are an arrangement to murder, a plan to put this tire in the middle of the road and, and sneak out it and understand his his drop off and pick up time for his children, that's very damning. And the fact that the death penalty is on the table is scary to me as a defense. So we have to figure out these checks, tech messages and communications around this timing. Sometimes that paper trail tells so much in these alleged murder for hire plots. Well, in other news for you, the jury in the XXX Tentacion murder trial down in Florida, they took a day off. And right now, their deliberation time in the jury room sits at more than 26 hours. The slow pace of deliberations has been frustrating for the three co-defendants, the attorneys involved, and you know what, our viewers as well. The jurors are deciding whether the three men on trial robbed and killed rapper XXXTentacion, real name Jose Onfroy. On Thursday, the jury requested that they be allowed to leave early and not come in Friday because of some appointments. The judge agreed to that. And he wasn't happy when he saw a look of agitation on the face of the lead prosecutor. The jury oftentimes came in when they were told to at the start time and because of motions and other arguments that came up overnight, they were sitting back there for hours waiting for us to start. So I think it's somewhat disingenuous for the parties now to grumble about their scheduling. The determination of verdicts is an important matter that cannot and should not be rushed. It helps neither side. And they will take the time that they need to take, and I don't have any difficulty with that. I get it. We all want instant gratification, but that's not always the way it goes. So we spoke with a trial consultant who specializes in jury consulting and trial strategy to get her take on this very lengthy deliberation. It could be that they don't all see things the same way, um, you know, that they don't remember everything the same way. So they want to, you know, take another look at the text messages or take another look at the photos. Um, they just seem to be very thorough and thorough juries. I mean, I think that's really what we want. We like to get their verdicts. We like to know what they're thinking, but um, sometimes they want to really take their time and they juries always want to get it right. 
but how that looks is not always the same. And uh, you know, they they may they may just be really pouring over everything and make sure that they feel good about their decision. It's an important decision, and juries do tend to take it very seriously. And welcome back, everybody. A man died in custody at a Virginia mental hospital last week, and 10 people are now facing second degree murder charges. Officers responded to a burglar report on March 3rd and identified 28 year old Ivo Otieno as a possible suspect. Police forced Otieno to be evaluated at a hospital based on their impression of him at the scene. And at the hospital, Otieno reportedly became physically assaultive towards the officers as he was arrested and then he was taken to jail. But on March 6, just before 4 p.m., officers took Otieno to Central State Psychiatric Hospital to be admitted. And just three and a half hours later, police had to investigate his death after being told Otieno again, quote, became combative during the admissions process. Seven employees from the Enrico County Sheriff's Office turned themselves in on Tuesday and three hospital workers were arrested. While his body is currently undergoing an autopsy, prosecutors say surveillance video shows Otieno being smothered to death. His family had a chance to watch that video that hasn't been released to the public as of yet. Here's what they said in a press conference on Thursday. My son was tortured, to put it right. I saw the torture. There is no way that Henrico County Sheriff deputies were on him. Seven people, seven officers on one man. My son was treated like a dog, worse than a dog. I saw it with my own eyes on the video. It started and it went on and it went on until he took his last breath. So Terry, the obvious question is, was this an excessive use of force? And what constitutes excessive use of force in Virginia? Well, under Virginia law, Jesse, excessive use of force is defined as objectively unreasonable use considering the totality of the circumstances. And what they want to look at is what is going on what kind of crime might have been committed. They look at here in this instance whether or not he was resisting. And if you look at the circumstances here, he was already in handcuffs and he was being held down by seven people. So I think it's very easy to come to the conclusion that this was unreasonable use of force and that they certainly did contribute to this man's death by all being on top of him at the same time. It just reminds me of the George Floyd case. Yeah, so Brian, these charges have been filed on a criminal information. What is that and what would be next for the, the in the case of these defendants? So Jesse, an, an information is a, is a written accusation of a crime where there's a penalty like jail time and it's written by a public official uh, under oath. So it's simply a prosecutor saying this is the information that I know. I am as an officer of the court taking an oath that they are true and I'm signing off on them and you're presenting them to the court. The next step for an information is it has to be, especially if it's a felony, an indictable offense. And so they're going to present it to the grand jury. The grand jury will review the evidence, review the video, review all of the information probably after the autopsy because they are going to want to know what the actual cause and manner of the death is. And from there, we are likely to see an indictment, and then the case will progress towards discovery and then potentially a trial. All right, we'll continue to monitor that one. And in another sad case, the family of Shanquilla Robinson is demanding diplomatic intervention as the killer of the 25-year-old remains at large. This week, the White House addressed the case for the very first time. Robinson went on a group trip to Mexico back in October, and within two days, she would be pronounced dead. Her friends blamed Robinson's death on alcohol poisoning, but an autopsy showed that there was severe trauma to her neck and spine. A viral video surfaced after Robinson's death, appearing to show her being severely beaten in a hotel room. Mexican authorities are investigating her death as femicide. This is a form of gender-based violence caused by one of her friends on the trip. Now, uh, Robinson's family, with the help of civil rights attorneys, wrote a letter to President Joe Biden. And in that letter, they included statements from employees at the Mexican resort that the group stayed in, naming Robinson's killer as Dejanay Jackson. During a White House briefing on Thursday, Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre commented on her death. Our hearts go out to uh, Ms. Robinson's family um, and friends. It is devastating what occurred, uh, and certainly um, uh, the, the tragedy is just devastating. And we've been following the news here, uh, but because, uh, because there's an FBI investigation underway, there's very little that we can say. Uh, we've got to 
as you know, we are very careful about um, criminal investigations or any uh, investigations that are uh, currently happening uh, through DOJ, in this particular case, FBI. This is something that we're clearly following here, uh, and uh, our hearts go out to her family.